We have a couple of supercomputers that sit at the uh, Center for Manufacturing that we administer and come up with solutions. But today I'm going to talk about um, PowerShell. I started out, I'm, I'm, I'm actually a, a Unix guy. Should I exit this? I'm actually a Unix guy, but I saw uh, some some uh, solutions that needed to be uh, had in the labs because I noticed uh, that when a lot of students go into the labs and they go in with their flash drives, a lot of times they leave the lab and they leave their flash drive in the system and they end up losing it. So I wrote a VB script that would give them a reminder and would tell them, it would pop up on the screen when they got ready to log out and tell them to remove their flash drive. But it was just a reminder. So at first it worked, it worked well. The, uh, it worked well and people would take their drives. And after a while, I would go and then we would still, we were still uh, gathering flash drives after a while. Because I guess people got used to it. Would just click OK, get distracted and leave it anyway. So I rewrote the VB script where it wouldn't let them log out until they removed the flash drive. They could click OK, but as long as the flash drive was there, it would loop, and it would pop up again and tell them, please remove your flash drive. So that was just start, that was VB script. And being a Unix guy was fun to do some Windows stuff. So next thing I, I, I found out that about was uh, PowerShell. PowerShell is the next, uh, the next scripting language for Windows, the, uh, the new and improved version. Yeah, the Windows 7 and Windows 8 still support VBScript, but they support PowerShell. So I started writing stuff in PowerShell. And here's my outline, introduction to apps, getting started, so forth and so on. Apps, what are apps? App is an abbreviation for application, which are software programs that can be run on a PC, tablet, internet, or mobile phone. Shazam that we're all familiar with is an app that runs on a cell phone or tablet and recognizes the music that's playing around you and identifies the music. PowerShell is an interactive shell and, micro and programming language for Microsoft. And uh, uh, my, my sys PS1 is a PowerShell app that runs on a PC and detects, identifies the user and computer name of a local machine. Let's see if I can get it to run. Eh, it failed. What this app would do, <coughs> it's still failing. Yeah. What this app will do, it just will identify the the computer and identify the username and that was just part that's just a uh, uh, something that mo most apps you want an app to be able to identify things and that's what this app would do but it's failing on this machine it passed fine earlier to get started with PowerShell you need to click the start and start uh, click start type the PowerShell in the search box clicks Windows PowerShell in the PowerShell command window and type get execution policy because unlike VBScript, PowerShell is, is set up for security because, you know, uh, uh, certain exploits can be uh, rendered through PowerShell. So with PowerShell, what they do, what Windows, what uh, Microsoft did with PowerShell, they don't allow it to run automatically. So you want to go and you want to start it. You want to check the execution policy. And usually it's going to come back restricted. So at that point, you can set the execution policy to unrestricted, and then you can run your apps. You can run your PowerShell commands and your scripts. PowerShell one liners. Here's a couple of PowerShell run liners that do certain things. This PowerShell one liner right here gets all of the environmental variables and stores them in a file called outfile. In order to see, to display the, the variables from the file, you could just type more for the out file. Also, you can filter 
and get, get output from that file matching the computer name. Let's see if this guy will do see if this one will run. Okay, this, this one liner right here will uh, monitor the, uh, will, will display all of the uh, registry entries. All right, this one works. So these are all your registry entries. PowerShell scripting. Now that those one-liners are one-line, are one-line scripts, a one-line command. So you can put a bunch of different uh, parameters on that line and and get things back or do things with PowerShell. But the power, the more powerful way of doing it is to create a script where you put all your PowerShell commands in one script. And here's a, uh, in order to, to script, you put all the commands, and here's a script I created, and it would do disk fragmentation. Because you know fragmentation, if, you, if your disk on your Windows box is, is real fragmented, your machine's going to run real slow. And a lot of people wonder, why, why is my machine running real slow? And I ask them, have you run your, your, your uh, fragmenter, your, your, your disk defragment to fragment to unfragment the disk and a lot of times they haven't run it but PowerShell will allow you to run you can run a script here and you can determine the fragmentation of the disk this one right here just just determines whether your disk is fragmented or not you have to add additional lines of, of code to to uh, defragment the drive which I didn't do because I didn't want to take any chances in case I ran it and overwrote something on on this machine In order to create a PowerShell script, you can go to Notepad and enter all your PowerShell commands and then save the file with the file name .psi as your, uh, as your, your extension. To run P PowerShell outside of the, the environment, PowerShell environment, you could type in the command box for your search. For here, for example, here you can type it. No, okay, this machine. Oh, <laughs> all You can type in on this machine. You have to. It doesn't allow just a regular user to run PowerShell because, I, like I said, for the security reasons I explained earlier. But as an administrator, you can run PowerShell commands from the from the uh, command window if you want to run a power run, run PowerShell. So that's how you'd run PowerShell outside of the environment. To run it inside the environment. You could open this guy, and this guy will allow you to run PowerShell commands. I just did a help get to see all the, the get commands for PowerShell, and these are all different commandlets that PowerShell allows you to run to do different things. And also you can run as, as administrator. Some, some PowerShell commands you have to run as the administrator. And from the command line, you can run this command to, uh, to run PowerShell. PowerShell scripting, I just did a help. You can type help to get help for PowerShell. Help get I did earlier. PowerShell for fun and profit. The conclusion would be you you can you can run apps. You can create apps with PowerShell 
on a on a Windows box, and some some possible uh, possible apps that can be created a registry monitor, like uh, say you go to websites, some websites you go to, and I'm not talking about illegal websites or bad websites. Even some good websites you go to, they make changes to your registry. So you could have you could write a wrapper script to start up your start up your web browser. And whenever a change is made to your registry, you get a notification. When, it, when you start the, the wrapper up, the wrapper will store your, your reg registry as it is to a file. And then if you get a change, then you can do a difference between those files to see what those changes are. Uh, cookie counter. Whenever you go to different websites, you get cookies. You might want to see what cookies you're getting. A text-to-speech. You can do text-to-speech. I have my uh, USB program that I wrote, the latest version of it, not only doesn't let the person log out if they leave their flash drive, it also goes and turns the volume up on the PC and gives them a verbal notice that says, please remove your flash drive. So it's text to, it's text to speech. I just have a little text line, goes and reads what the name of the USB is, and goes and tells them, please remove. So, and, and then it turns the volume down until they click it again and don't remove it. Then it tells them again, please remove. So that's text to, text to speech. And also there's speech to text functions that you can do where you can talk to your computer and if you, with a different uh, database of stored uh, text, you can have that speech, that, that what you say to the computer, execute certain text lines in that file, whereas cer certain functions will happen. PC monitor. You could also create a PC monitor that monitors all the functions and changes and operations of the PC. Okay, and this one right here would be one that you would do maybe for profit because you can, there's a compiler, there's compilers out there where you can compile your PowerShell apps into standalone apps. Then you can distribute them. And the person doesn't need PowerShell to be able to run them. Also, uh, PowerShell can be interfaced with the .NET framework, which is like a virtual software environment for multi-PC and multi-language applications. Uh, you can interface uh, those scripts also to COM, option, com objects, whereas you can do animations, or you can do graphics, or you can create m your own personal menus. Here's some references, uh, Windows scripting, so forth and so on. But here's a tutorial that you can go to and you, if you want to learn about, here's a good introduction. I took this tutorial. It's pretty interesting. It's pretty fun. And it's not real difficult. So you can go to that website, which is this guy right here, Virtual Labs. And then uh, you can learn about the .NET framework to get started here. And it talks about it. And it gives you ex places that you can go. And you can learn about the .NET framework. Any questions? Well, that, that's a that's a that's a personal script that I wrote for for the university, so it was just an idea. Uh, whereas I could do that to uh, to determine things. Like I said, I'm really a, a, a Unix guy, but sometimes you get tired and you want to do something else. So I wrote that just to, for security's sake to to solve some problems. Yes. See, I've been here 18 years, and what I do is I know there's, there's bureaucracy. There's bureaucracy. But the thing about it is, the thing about if it works, they don't care. They like it. Oh, yeah, we'll use it. So you can bypass the bureaucracy if it works good and they like it. Because that's what I did with the, with the USB thing. I just went to the lab guy and said, hey, let's try this. And we tried it. Instead of going through the, the, the uh, change management uh, uh, you got to go to a change management meeting and you got to sit down with the committee and then you got to make your case and they might say no we don't like it make some changes to it and come back next week but we just implemented it, it worked and they like it now I, I, I added versions I had you know constantly improved it
Oh yeah, this this super far supersedes batch files. But if you can do batch files, you can do this because it's the same um, it's the same methodology, like the same thinking, the same way of thinking. Yeah, but this supersedes it because it's so much more powerful. Well, thank you very much. For mm -hmm.